Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I am out here today with a semi-auto DPM light machine gun. Now, this was the modernized version of the standard Soviet light machine gun from World War II. And there aren't, they're not a very well-known gun here in the United States. I'm sure, you know, people have heard of them, but there are not many of these out there. And I've wanted one for a very long time, so I'm really excited to actually get a chance to do some shooting with this one. Now, a little bit of background on the DPM. Uh, it, all, it originally started as the DP, uh, that is Degturev Pulyamet, so the machine gun from a designer named Degturev. Degturev was a guy who actually started working in the Russian ordnance system at age 11, I presume sweeping the floors or, or something like that, and uh, ended up all the way at the rank of Major General and being awarded or recognized as a hero of uh, the Soviet Union which was in fact for his design of this light machine gun. He started working on this in the early 1920s, and it was actually entirely of his own accord. He was doing this on his own time on the side, because the Soviet military system didn't recognize the need for a light machine gun, and he did. Well, it wouldn't take more than a couple years before the Soviet system really did recognize that they really needed a light machine gun. Uh, prior to that, the doctrinal idea had been, well, we'll just depend on heavy machine guns, the belt-fed machine guns. When they started realizing that they needed one, well, here was Degturev with his design pretty much already built. And it's a really good Soviet design, too. This is a very simple gun, it's reliable, it's effective, and it really is no surprise that this did excellent service for the Soviet Union all the way through World War II. Uh, of course, the Finns, well-known connoisseurs of military firearms, were thrilled to capture these during the Winter War, and they made extensive use of them, too. That's always a, a good selling point. And what Degturev set up here was a, it was an open bolt gun, had only a handful of moving parts, it is gas piston operated, and uses flapper locking. So there are two flaps on the side of the bolt, open up, lock the bolt in place, gun fires, unlocks, recoils, etc. We'll take it apart in a few minutes, but first, I want to do a little bit of shooting with it. So originally the DP series of guns fired from an open bolt. In fact. If they're full auto or safe only, there is no semi-auto function on them. And originally you would pull the charging handle back and the, the bolt would lock to the rear ready to fire. This is a semi-auto conversion made by SMG, Smith Machine Group. Uh, they are perhaps best known for their semi-auto FG42s, but they've been doing these, in fact the guys there have been doing semi-auto DPs since before SMG was its own standalone company. They did a lot of the guns that were out on the market many years ago. They've decided to start doing them again, and they made a couple improvements to the system, and it's pretty slick. So, it is a it is now a closed bolt design, and instead of using a striker firing system like most semi-auto machine gun conversions, they've actually gone ahead and come up with a really clever little hammer fire design. We'll pull it apart after we're done with the range here, but it's pretty slick, and what it means is that it actually has a pretty nice trigger. It's not, you know, match. AR-15 awesome spec trigger, but it's about an 8-pound trigger that has a very crisp break, which is something you generally don't get with a striker-fired semi-auto machine gun. Um, and with this trigger, you can absolutely shoot this thing accurately. It's a lot of fun. I have had a number of other semi-auto machine guns that I've either owned or borrowed, and usually the triggers in them are just kind of atrocious, and you deal with it because that's how semi-auto machine guns are. Not with these new SMG DPs. So, to uh, go ahead and get started, the magazine catch is located right here, the little wings on the back of the rear sight. We've got a locking tab on the front, so to load this, lock the, the tabs in, bring it down, and then this is supposed to be loaded on an open bolt, because that's how the gun was designed. So it just takes a little more force to push it down with the, the round in the magazine compressing onto the, the back of the bolt. All right, mag's on, charge it, and we're good to go. You'll notice as I'm shooting, the magazine, the internal section on top of the magazine will rotate, which means that this little loading tab is an ammunition indicator. It will make one full revolution around the magazine, which means I can tell by the position exactly how much ammo I have left. It's kind of handy. So this version is actually a DPM, modernized, and this was introduced in 1944. These, in this configuration, did actually see a little bit of service right at the very end of World War II. 
And there are two main, well, three main things that they did to change the design. The first one is the buttstock. So the original DP had a standard traditional style of grip, it had a grip safety in here, um, and it just wasn't nearly as comfortable or utilitarian as a proper pistol grip. So they changed that. They changed the recoil spring design. In the original gun, the recoil spring was actually uh, wound around the gas piston, which is fine, and it saves space, and it made for a nice, efficient, compact design. The problem is, under sustained fire, the gas piston got very hot, which meant the spring then got very hot, and the spring lost its tension, and the gun would malfunction. So they moved the recoil spring to being behind uh, the bolt, which is why they now have this little tubular extension to hold the recoil spring. That's the second change. And the third change, probably the least substantial of the three, was to redesign the bipod. So the bipod on the DPM is bolted onto the top of the shroud. It has a little bit of pivot, not a lot, but a little bit. And of course the legs fold up. The original bipod, the DP bipod, instead was a unit, this one's a little sticky, that clamped onto or, or around the shroud. Didn't It was fixed in position, and the legs were a little bit flimsier. This, these got lost because guys would take them off and then lose track of them. The new bipod was much better. The gun is chambered for 7.62 by 54 rim, which makes sense. That was the standard Russian cartridge for everything uh, at the time, the most Nagants and the Maxim heavies. And it uses this very distinctive pan magazine. Holds 47 rounds. And the problem with 54 rimmed is that it's got, as the name implies, a big rim. And that makes it difficult to to make box magazines, because you tend to get malfunctions where one rim gets caught behind another. Now they have made a few. Uh, the Finnish LS26 has a 20-round box magazine, and of course the Russian SVD would later have a box magazine, the, uh, the Dragunov has a box magazine, but these are typically 10-round, 15-round in the case of the AVTs. They're not high-capacity magazines, and trying to get a high-capacity magazine in 54 rimmed is a tricky proposition. That's why Degtyrev have used this pan instead. Um, it's a pretty, kind of a bulletproof magazine. It takes a little while to load, because you can only load one round at a time. Again, we'll, we'll get into the mag loading in a minute, but it's a pretty effective magazine. The downsides to it are that it's bulky and weird to carry. So I have a, an ammo can of that holds three of these things, it's just, there's no easy way to carry this. Imagine the webbing to carry these things. What you end up with is a big satchel full of magazines. But that's the option, so that's what we have. Now in 1946, they would uh, develop a final iteration of the DP where they uh, basically built an adapter, a belt-fed adapter, that would uh, latch in place in place of the magazine. And that was used after World War II wasn't necessarily the most effective conversion because it was lacking some things like there was no attachment for a belt box to the gun. So if you wanted to get up and move, you had to unload the gun or drag this belt behind the gun. There wasn't any easy way to deal with it. Um, but in its World War II usage, pan magazines are what they had. Well, I can certainly see why the Soviets liked this thing. It has basically no effective recoil from the ground. Now the downside is there's really no good way to shoot this thing from the shoulder. You can kind of strap on the sling and fire it from the hip, but it's not really an effective way to, to use the weapon. From the ground on this bipod, it's comfortable to shoot, it's accurate, it's really easy staying on the sights, and it's a lot of fun. This is, you know, I've had other Built other semi-auto machine gun conversions, and this is the most fun of all of them, I think. All right, so one of the other things that makes the DP such a cool gun is that it's really kind of AK-like in its simplicity and durability. We'll go ahead and do a quick field strip here. The first thing we do is take off the recoil spring extension. So there's a little plunger on this side. Push that in and rotate it 90 degrees up. So there's the plunger right there. That comes out. Recoil spring comes out. Then we want to take the lower frame assembly off. We have a screw right here. By the way, the first time you do this, and every subsequent time, you will irrevocably scratch the finish on your gun. Just get used to it. It's kind of like the, uh, the safety scratch on an AK. 
So we unscrew that, take it out, and then eh, various bits of this are a little hot, but then the lower assembly just drops right off. Now, here we can see this cool hammer mechanism that SMG came up with. This is, this is my, my DP lower, and it has the original fire control mechanism, which is extremely simple. It's just a sear, because there was nothing but full auto on this gun. Pull the trigger, sear goes down, gun fires. That obviously won't do for a semi-auto gun, so what SMG came up with was this really clever, kind of a linear hammer. So when I pull the trigger, this is going to snap straight forward. There's a compression spring behind here, and what makes this clever is that there's very little real estate to work with in the lower assembly of the gun, and there's really not a whole lot more space in the receiver either, so it would be completely impossible to put in something like an AR-15 fire control group. So this makes a huge difference in the shootability of the gun. Um, unlike most of the striker fired type of conversions of machine guns, this is a trigger that's a little bit heavy, so seven and a half or eight pounds, but it doesn't have any, um, any play to it. It is a crisp, it goes nowhere, 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 fires. Now once the lower is off, we can take out the internals, just pull the bolt back, and there you have it. So in both of its forms, the DP and the DBM, it is a flapper locked action, and so you have these two flaps. This is the locked position. These flaps are pushed to the outside by the firing pin, which I'll pull out in a moment. When the bolt goes forward, or rather when the carrier goes backwards, these flaps retract to the inside parallel to the bolt, and that allows the whole thing to cycle. When this is going forward, the bolt hits the barrel face, it stops, the carrier keeps going, flaps open up, gun is locked. Now, in its original guise, this, which has these flat surfaces, which push the, the flaps out, originally this had the firing pin attached directly to it. And so what would happen is, when it locked, flaps come out, the, the firing pin would then immediately protrude out the front and fire the gun. So despite being an open bolt gun, this didn't have a fixed firing pin. It did have a movable firing pin right here. This is actually not that much different than a G43 in some concepts. What SMG did is they replaced the firing pin, they cut the firing pin off that, and they added this firing pin, spring-loaded, and that's what the hammer hits. So it's a pretty clever little system. Can take those off. There's a pin in here that holds the firing pin in place, so I can leave that. But you can see this still fits and operates right there. So it's a, a slick conversion that they did. Not a whole lot to the bolt carrier. It's got uh, grooves down here that allow the flaps to move in and out. Piston head is up there. This is all one complete solid assembly. On the original DP, the recoil spring was right in this position. And of course that led to problems with heat affecting the spring tension of the spring. All right, we have a quick change barrel mechanism here as well, but I'm gonna show you that later because I've been shooting this thing and the barrel's a little too hot for me to just grab which is, I suppose, one of the potential downsides to the design. There is no carry handle on the barrel. There's no easy way to grab it. You would need a glove. All right, loading the magazine. DP magazines are going to have a little tab here. You'll notice right now this tab's nice and flat. When I pull it, it's actually going to lift up like that. That's supposed to happen. Don't worry about that. What we're doing here is we're rotating the inner uh, piece of the drum while leaving the outer piece in place. And what you have to do is pull it, drop around in. There's one round, pull it, drop around in. This is kind of a tedious magazine to load, but I've yet to have any malfunctions with these. There's not a whole lot to go wrong with them, really. In fact, as drum magazines go, they're pretty impressive. This is 47 rounds, which is a weird number, but I suppose that's what you got with the uh, Okay, so there's the issue, is you have to be able to pull it far enough, which means you kind of have to change your grip on this thing every few rounds.
and I'm out. So if you're interested in one of these, they are available from SMG, Smith Machine Group. They're making them right now. One of the cool things is what they're actually doing is they're making receivers and they're making barrels. Barrels have always been one of the really hard things to get for the DP guns. And the brand new production on both. So it is from a ground up semi-auto receiver. They will sell you a complete gun like this. Um, I did provide the sling myself, but they will also sell you just a barrel. You can buy just some of the semi-auto parts, just the receiver. If you have a parts kit, you can send it to them and they'll build it for you. That'll shave, you know, save a little bit of money on the, uh, the cost of the whole package. So I have a link to their website in the description text below. Definitely check that out if you're interested. These are expensive guns, but as semi-auto machine guns go, they're actually pretty darn reasonable. This is one of the, the cheapest guns of this sort out there. Well, I've had a lot of fun with this thing so far. I haven't had any malfunctions of any kind, which is both really cool and also as it should be with a, a parts kit that is as rugged and durable as a DP and the fabricating skills from a company like SMG. They do really good work. Uh, don't let their kind of horrible looking website fool you. They're not web designers, they are machinists and that's what they do and they do it well. So don't hesitate to get in touch with them if you want some cool, awesome piece of commie World War II hardware like this. I should say they are doing both DPM and DP, so whichever you want. Thanks for watching. Tune in again next time to more Forgotten Weapons.